Now on to Zigzag looks at the discovery of the patterns that held the key to the conquest of cholera. Which one would you drink? They're both water. I'm not going to drink that one for a start, and neither would you. Cheers. 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 Well, it may not be the best taste in the world, but at least it's clean. Well, perhaps you're wondering where we are. We're in a very old, giant water pumping station that's driven by steam. These great pumps draw water up out of a reservoir, send it all the way along the water pipes, under the roads, and into London's homes. In fact, these two engines are among the very last in the country that are still driven by steam, and between them they pump up millions of gallons of water every day. But when the water first comes out of the river, it looks like this, all murky and horrible. But when it's been cleaned here at the pumping station, it looks like this, clear and clean. And of course, it's safe to drink. But then you know all about that, don't you? Well, this is a detective story, and it's all about water. Do you know, Max, I think we ought to go somewhere a bit quieter, don't you? You're right. But listen, on the way, let's have a look at some of this machinery, shall we? Yeah, good idea. OK. That's better. It Much better. It certainly is. Did you know that up until about 120 years ago, the only drinking water which people could get was straight out of the river or out of the many wells that were found in the big cities? Either that or they had to buy it from someone in the street. The water carriers sold water to anyone who had the money to pay for it. Only the rich people had their own water taps, and the water they got wasn't very clean. Most houses had no water at all laid on for washing or drinking, so getting water could mean a long queue at the pump. If you couldn't be bothered to wait at the pump, there was always the river. But rivers, like the Thames in London, didn't only carry water. The Thames carried a lot of filthy, smelly matter as well. The lavatories in houses emptied straight into streams, and the streams led straight into the river. The result was a very smelly, nasty river. Imagine drinking water straight out of that. The people in the poor areas of town suffered badly. Too many people living in each room and never enough food to eat. Worst of all were the sudden outbreaks of sickness that killed many, parents and children alike. The most feared and the most violent sickness was cholera. The doctors seemed unable to cure it. Those who caught it and managed to get better were very lucky. Where did cholera come from? Nobody knew for sure, but most people thought that it lurked in places like this. The mountains of stinking rubbish on the edge of town. The streets full of refuse where people walked and children played. People believed that something in the air caused disease. It was something that you smelt and something that you breathed. Now, I've got an old book here about the story of cholera. And it shows pictures of people 
trying to fight off the disease by burning barrels of tar in the street to make lots of smoke. And here's a picture of them lighting a bonfire to drive away the disease. But there was one man who didn't believe that cholera was in the air. John Snow was a young doctor. He'd seen people fall ill with cholera and he'd noticed that the first thing they suffered from was terrible stomach pains and diarrhea. Could it be something that they ate or, or drank? John Snow came to work in London and he was horrified by the filthy living conditions that he found in the big city. In 1854, cholera came back to London, this time more serious than ever. There was an epidemic. Hundreds of people got the disease at once. It broke out in Soho, a district in the centre of London. 500 people died in the first week, and others began to run away from their homes, hoping to escape. There was panic. John Snow paid a visit to each house in the area where people had caught cholera. And at each house, he asked the same questions. What have you been eating? Where does the water come from? And every evening when he got home, he marked on the map the position of each house where he'd found the disease. And after a while, the marks on the map began to take on an interesting pattern. This is a copy of John Snow's map of Soho. These are the streets. And these are some of the houses where people caught cholera. I'll mark a few more. Now these black lines here represent people who died. So you can see a lot of people died here. Apparently that was a big workshop. And a lot died over here too. And in this area. Now, can you notice anything about the way that these houses are spread out? Just look at the markers. Well, they're all collected together in a bunch. And there's another thing. Look here, right in the middle of the bunch. What's this? Got it? Right again, a water pump, a place where people get water. Most of the deaths from cholera took place nearest to Broad Street Pump. Well, it suddenly seemed obvious to Jon Snow. There had to be a connection between that pump and cholera. After all, there were no deaths around the other pumps. Just look. None up here, or here, or here, or here. Well, as he went on, the pattern seemed to get stronger and stronger. More deaths, and always Broad Street pump right in the middle. Well, then there came a snag. News came of an event which didn't fit the pattern. An old lady and her niece had died of cholera somewhere way up here, right off the map. Well, how could that be explained? Well, John was sure there was an answer, so he went to investigate. Again, he asked the same questions. What had they eaten? Where did their water come from? And lo and behold, the old lady had water delivered to her house every day from Broad Street. Apparently, she particularly liked the taste of it. Her niece had drunk the water as well, and they were the only people who had died of cholera in that area. Well, now he was absolutely convinced. Taking his map with him, Jon Snow went along to a meeting at the local parish council to tell them what he discovered. At first, they didn't want to believe him. How could water possibly carry disease? This had never been heard of. But in the end, the parish council listened to his argument and agreed to remove the handle of the pump so that people had to get their water somewhere else. So what happened? The cholera epidemic gradually stopped. And so for the time being, that was the end of that. Didn't you go along and have a look at the Broad Street pump not long ago? Yes, I did. So what did it look like 120 years later? Well, it was hard to imagine all the terrible things that must have happened there. This is the exact spot where the Broad Street water pump stood. But this isn't the actual pump. 
The real one was taken away a long time ago when all the houses and the shops in this area were connected to the new mains water supply, which was laid underneath the street. The people that live here now get their water through taps, like most of you and I do. But although the pump's gone, there's still something here to remind us of the cholera story. Look at the name on this pub. Can you read it? John Snow isn't forgotten around here, is he? Those houses over there look pretty much the same as they did at the time of the cholera outbreak. And the people that live there and in the surrounding streets used to come here for their water. They'd hand their buckets on this little hook down here and then they'd pump away like mad until the bucket was full and then take it off home. The people preferred the Broad Street pump water because they said it tasted fresher and lots of people used to walk quite a long way to get it. Now, let's have a look at John Snow's map and see if we can pick out any of the houses where people fell ill with cholera. There we are. Here's the pump and here are those houses opposite. Now, the map shows that two people died in that house, three people died over there, one person died there, and four people died over there. Right next to the pump, the map shows the worst hit place in the whole area. Look at this. This building used to be a little factory where they made exploding caps, like the kind you put into cap guns. And very thirsty work it was too, because it was very warm and very dusty inside the factory. And they kept two big barrels filled with water from the Broad Street pump for the workmen to drink. 18 people died of cholera there. The attack lasted 42 days, and in all, 616 people died. Six weeks of terrible suffering, but now it was over. Snow's brilliant work had convinced people that if they drank dirty water, then they'd get sick, and of course, that's something that we still remember today. But at that time, people didn't know what it was in the water that caused the sickness. They even made a joke about it. This is a cartoon of a lady looking at some water through a magnifying glass and imagining all sorts of horrible creatures there. Well, it was ages before anyone filled in the next part of the story. Robert Koch was another famous doctor who was determined that one day he would find the cause of diseases like cholera. In his work, he used a microscope. Now, what a microscope does is to make things look big enough to see clearly. Look at this. Do you know what it is? This is what a grain of sand would look like under a microscope. Well, Robert Koch didn't waste his time with grains of sand. He started by looking at water from areas where he knew there was cholera. And what did he see? These. Tiny, tiny living things of all shapes. But so small, they could only be seen through the microscope. He knew they were living because as he watched, they grew more and more in number. How could he be sure that these were the cholera germs? Again, like John Snow, he had to look for a pattern. In the end, he found it. In every drop of water that caused cholera, there were these tiny, tiny tadpole-like germs. They just had to be the cause of cholera. Well, now that we know that it's these tiny living germs that cause disease, we go to a lot of trouble to keep them away from us, and especially to keep them out of our drinking water. And that's what a water pumping station is for. So, um, should we go and see how this one works? Yeah, let's go and have a look around. Water from the river is kept in this big reservoir. When it's needed, the water runs into these large tanks. They're a bit like swimming pools, aren't they? Here's one that's empty. At the bottom, there's a bed of sand. 
The water just soaks slowly through the sand and leaves most of the dirt on top. After a while, the dirty sand is scraped away and replaced with new sand. I think John Snow would have liked to have seen this, don't you? His discovery of a simple pattern that linked dirt with disease has saved an awful lot of people's lives. But of course, it's not only famous doctors who can work things out. You can do it as well. You'll need a pencil and paper for this because we've got a quiz for you. There's not much to write. Just one word for each answer will do until after the programme. Right, are you ready? Now have a look at this picture and see if you can tell what caused the pattern of dark splodges on the ground. Look closely. What caused the pattern of dark splodges on the ground? Any ideas? Can you see what these are? They're steps. Do you notice anything about them? Look at the ones near the bottom. They're a different shape, another pattern. Now, what do you think caused that? Have a go at this one. Can you think of any reason why the trees are growing in that peculiar shape? They're all bent in one direction, aren't they? Look at these balloons. They're filled with lifting gas. So when I let go of them, off they go. Well, I've got a question for you. Why are they following one another? I wonder how far they'll get. We could find out if we wanted to. How? Here's a clue. Think about it. Have you worked it out yet? You. Pam, let's let some more go. How about letting all these off? All the lot? Yes. All Ready? Right. One, two, three, go! Look at that. That's tremendous. They look like floating Smarties. <laughs> Much more like it. Okay. Do you think they'll go a long way, Max? Yes, I do. But I think this might surprise you. Come on, I've got something I want to show you. Oh, Max, what on earth have you got here? <laughs> Well, I wanted a big map because I've got the results of a balloon race that happened recently and we've marked on here all the places where the balloons were picked up. Yes, but where did they start from? Oh, they started there, look, in England. So some of them came quite a long way, didn't they? Right down to here. Well, that one had a very long journey. Yes, it did. That one, in fact, landed in Turkey, which is almost at the end of the Mediterranean Sea. But not all of them went that far, look. Look at these here. Yes, and that's not to mention the ones that fell into the sea. We'll never know where they ended up. No, I don't suppose we will. But what about this? They didn't go in a straight line, did they? Now, why do you think that is? Why do they make that kind of pattern? Well, I suppose you'll have to be a John Snow to work that one out. Why don't you give it a try? I'm going to have a go. Bye. Bye.